All right. Hey, guys, here we are over on my notebook over here. I know I haven't said it to many of you guys here, but definitely try to get a graph paper notebook. Um, it's just a lot easier to just keep your proofs organized. And I can tell you that now because you've seen some proof. Again, your proofs are written in two columns, and that's how we'll do it today. So uh, the grids, right, especially with these vertical lines right here, make it a lot easier to organize your two column proofs and also make it easier to draw shapes here. So I wanted to call that out. Your homework on Tuesday is going to be classwork homework. It's just going to be this. It's going to be page 20, numbers one through six. Those are the written exercises. So the first six written exercises, all you got to do on Tuesday. And uh, that's, yeah, that's really all I got to do. Let's turn in. We're going to do number five together as well today. So got my textbook over here. I'm ready to go. I got my notebook over here. I'm ready to go. I got my grid paper to help keep my uh, myself organized. Over here in the textbook. So this is what we're going to spend pretty much all week on. Uh, section one, four properties from algebra. We're going to move this towards geometry in Wednesday and get more practice on Friday. But I just want to call out that we've entered in now a new mini section. Again, we did the self-test last week on Friday because we finished the first mini section on the points, lines, and planes, you know, the undefined terms and related uh, definitions. This is the new mini section we're on right now, introduction to proof. So you can read the objectives kind of on your own time. And really, we just introduced proofs to you just a few minutes ago in our first video here for section one four. So anyways, properties from algebra, just to reiterate in the video too, you should have taken notes on all this. I put another reminder here, right, in the book right here. Guys, it's written right here. This is some of the most valuable rules that you have in the entire book. So you gotta make sure you've written all of this down. And so you can begin trying to determine what this heck this means. Addition property of equality, multiplication property of equality. What the heck the transitive property is here? Did I explain it well? I don't know if I did. Normally hearing, you need to hear the transitive property a few times and practice it a few times before like you feel like you really get it. So reflection, reflexive property. So here, make sure you have all eight of these written down. I say eight because, hey, I didn't talk about the symmetric property with you. The symmetric property really doesn't matter. It doesn't come up in this textbook really much at all. But anyways, in case you're curious, the symmetric property, check it out. If A equals B, then B equals A. All right? That basically means if you know 2X equals 4X over 2, then 4X over 2 equals 2X. Anyways, that was probably too complicated. The whole idea is if something equals another thing, then that other thing equals the original something right? If one equals two, then two equals one, right? Or number one equals number two, then number two equals number one, right? Uh, so it's pretty obvious here that you can, it doesn't matter what you write on the left, what you write on the right, it, you know, you can flip-flop and it's totally fine. So that's symmetric. Anyways, that won't really be in the geometry stuff, but reflexive property definitely is, transitive property definitely is. We're not going to use those two today, okay? So heads up here, when you're solving equations, you don't really use reflexive and transitive all that often. These will be more important when we get to geometry here. Okay. Anyways, getting into it, we got to do number five as an example, and then you'll just have five problems for homework beyond that. So that's the reason why I want to do this as an example. So maybe you read a bit below it here. You read page 17 because they're going to talk about an example down here as well. Um, but beyond that, once you get to the geometry type stuff, this is the kind of stuff I'm going to review with you guys on Wednesday. So don't really worry about page 18 yet or page 19 for that matter. You're welcome to read it if you want to, but you don't have to. So let's go ahead and find the problems you'll be doing, okay? You're gonna be doing these problems today or tomorrow, right? If you're, if you're watching this on Monday, these are your written exercises. So you're gonna do problems one through six. This is your classwork homework, asynchronous classwork and homework. Shouldn't take you very long. You hopefully can get it done in the 25 minute asynchronous class. Um, but the one I'm gonna do with you guys today here is number five. Written exercises, it says justify each step, justify each step. So they've written in a lot more than, uh, here than I wanted them to write in here because I actually wanna write a proof here. What they've written here, these are basically statements of a proof because remember, in a proof, and I'm gonna write this down here the way that I want you to do it, I want you to do this as a two column proof. So get used to this here, two columns. So right, horizontal line and a vertical line. And we got it set up here. Left side of a proof. Do you guys remember what the left side goes here? Well, they're written down here. These are where your math or geometry statements go. Okay, so you can make statements using numbers, but the thing that your teachers probably pushed you on in the past, which is you can't just like say what the answer is, right? How one thing gets to another thing because you gotta say why. You gotta say why, and the why here is the reason. The reason you have to back it up. And remember, Euclid's logic was airtight, right? Airtight, as Saul Khan said, airtight, right? As Mr. Fortin saying right now, and I think Lincoln thought it was airtight too. And that's the reason why he found an inspiration for it in terms of becoming a lawyer here. So he used reasons, right? We're going to use reasons this year to make sure our logic is airtight. So I would set it up here as a two-column proof. 
All right, here, this is our given. So this is the original equation we start with. That must be our given premise of this problem here. So I'll write this out here too. Given two over three B equals eight minus two B, then we wanna prove this, right? We wanna prove that uh, B equals three. So what, basically what we wanna do is we wanna put together the work here to make, basically know that if we're given this, then we would know that that's true. Now that that's true so that in the future, if we have an equation like this, we can just say, oh, B equals three. We got that. We've done it before. We've proven it before. I doubt you'll have this exact equation ever again in your math career, but hey, you might as well prove the answer with me right now. Good old Mr. Fordman, as we have here. Um, okay, get out of my way. Get out of my way, Ben. Out of my way. All right, so let's do this here. The first step to a proof is what? Oh, my first statement. And what is my first statement? Well, that's going to be what we're starting with, my given premise. Two-thirds B equals eight minus 2B. And the reason why I know that is true, well, it was given to us. It was a true given premise. They're not lying to us. They're giving an equation to us that they know is true. And then we got to work with it. They actually give you the statements here in these problems. So what I would do is just fill out maybe all your statements here. This is going to be, let's see, statement one, two, three, four, five. This is a five-step proof. Four and five. You can layer it out here. And for every statement, there's going to be a reason. Any statement you make in math, you got to back up. Okay, and that's what you're picking up this year is some of the most important reasons that we have. Some have been around for thousands of years. Other ones have been discovered more recently than that. And we'll talk about some of the ones that have been discovered more recently here. Okay, so this is given. So we start with this. We're getting this into the next step. Ooh, what did we do? What happened? How did our equation change? What happens here? Well, we noticed here that we had three as a denominator, okay? So maybe I'll actually show some of the algebra here on this one here. So we had three as a denominator. So it looks like in order to get rid of three as a denominator, probably what I would have done, honestly, was multiply by three over two. But anyways, uh, just multiply by whatever the denominator is here, is here. So it looks like we multiply both sides by three, okay? In order to make this get rid of the fraction, right? Get rid of the fraction. If you see a fraction, you might as well multiply both sides by the denominator, and that's going to fraction bust. We'll get rid of the fraction right here. Three times two over three, right? The threes would cancel. We're left with just two B here equal to three times by the quantity eight minus two B. And they didn't actually distribute it, but I think that's going to be the next step here. Okay, so step two, or step two, the reason why I know I can start with my given premise like this, and then I can write two B equals three times the quantity eight minus B. Well, how can I justify that? What did I do to both sides, right? What did I do? I multiply both sides by three. So this is the multiplication property of equality. No, you can't just write multiplication. So you got to write multiplication prop of equality. The reason why you can't write multiplication is because it's not specific enough. You're using a pro you're flexing a property of equality, meaning if you have equality, statements of equality, if you multiply both sides by the same thing, equality is preserved. If you just wrote multiplication right there, that's vague. You're just you're saying, hey, I just multiplied something. And you know, I'm like, cool, what did you multiply? Did you multiply an inequality? Did you multiply just an expression? No, you're multiplying equations by both sides, both sides by the same amount. That's the multiplication property of equality. All right, next step right here. We got 2B equaling 24 minus 6B. This is something I didn't cover earlier in the video because it's not that important here, but I wanted to call it out. Again, I didn't want to distract you right now. What's the reason here? If you've done algebra one, you should know what this reason is, okay? How I can go here from 2B. So 2B didn't change. My left side didn't change. My right side got rewritten. Now. How did my right side get rewritten? What exactly happened? Well, I hear somebody shouting it out. You distributed. So remember this? Parentheses means multiply, and this is the distributive property of multiplication over addition or subtraction. So here, these individual terms both got multiplied by three. Three times eight is 24. Three times negative two B is negative six B. So our justification and how our equation changed is that we distributed. So I'm gonna write down here distributive property of equality. Again, it's kind of annoying the book does this because it's not important in geometry, but um, you are going to write it on this homework here, distributed prop of equality and check it out here. This is another thing that in my talk earlier, I skipped over because it's not important at all, but your book just wants you to practice it. Maybe they think you just learned the distributed property, uh, but they have listed it down here. So properties of equality and other properties from algebra, such as this distributed property here can be used to justify steps when you're solving an equation. So in the reading, they do talk about the distributive property. So they'll come up in this problem set. Will they come up in future geometry problem sets? No, not really, unless they're just practicing solving algebra for whatever reason. But anyways, so uh, just didn't want to be like, where did that come from? And teach that that here. This one here, I'm going to write here, not, not important next to it, because it's not important. Not important 
that you really get that. Um, anyways, all right, so we got to finish massaging this uh, equation so we can actually prove our fact that B's got to equal three. Um, what am I doing to both sides? Well, I got I to gotta collect my variables. So it looks like I got to add 6B to both sides of the equation right here. And so I'll do that, shall we? Um, so let's add 6B here and let's add 6B here. And I'm going to get what? I'm going to get 8B on the left side equal to 24. The reason why I can make the statement 8B equals 24 is why? Why can I make? Well, I knew statement 3, 2B equals 24 minus 6B was true because I proved it so far. Well, what did I do to both sides? I added to both sides the same uh, equal amounts to both sides here. And what property is that called? You guessed it, the addition property of equality. All right, we're good to go. Almost good to go. What's my last step, guys? What's my last step? Ah, yes, I got to establish that B equals 3. Why do I know that B equals 3? Well, I knew that if B, 8B equals 24, and I know it is, I've proven that so far. So if 8B equals 24, what would follow from that is that then B would have to equal 3 because we simply divided both sides. So last step is the division property of equality. And there we have it. We have done number 5. Number 5 is good to go. We've proven it here. Rewatch this as an example if you're confused, and then uh, hopefully you understand it and you can try the other five problems. Make sure you do all six of them, right? So make sure you have this in your homework, but your, uh, your Tuesday homework is this, numbers one through six. And if you're watching this on Monday, go ahead and do that exit ticket on Desmos and then worry about this tomorrow when you're doing Tuesday's asynchronous class. Thanks so much, guys. Email me if you have any questions. Bye. <laughs>